And welcome everyone to another Smart Money Circle show. I'm Adam Sarhan. With me today is Dr. Howard Berman, who's the CEO and chairman of Koya Therapeutics. Ticker symbol is C-O-Y-A. Dr. Berman, thank you so much for taking the time and welcome to the Smart Money Show. Thank you so much for having me, Adam. So Howard, I always like to begin. Can you tell us a little about your story and how you got to where you are today, please? I'd be pleased to. So I'm a PhD by training. I did my doctorate at Cornell in neuropharmacology. I had a strong interest early on in the brain, of course, and that's uh, followed me from my early days and in, into my PhD. And subsequent to that, I moved into big pharma and I worked at companies such as Novartis and Lilly and Fosis. And I had a lot of success at these companies in developing therapeutics and particularly, I did a lot of work in immuno-oncology, which is cancer, so something different than neuro. And then so down the line, I there was a series of circumstances that occurred, which I'm happy to get into, which then allowed me to transition into entrepreneurialism and the formation of Koya and other ventures that I've been involved in. But my, my career really has evolved and uh, the right time and the right place has led me to what I'm doing today. I love it. So we, I'm, I'm interested. But what are those things that happened to get you to where you are today, please? Sure. Well, first of all, you to be an entrepreneur, you have to have an innate, inborn love of risk, but also reward, and also how to get there. If you don't, if you're meek and you don't have the ability to control risk, it's not for you. And I was born unlike the rest of my family, with the this the spilkus is what you, you call it, the, the yes. just wanting to do it and wanting to be out there. Mm -hmm. But my father, my brilliant father, he was a triple board certified physician. Oh, wow. He was the, you know, the epicenter of our of our family's life. And he was just a an incredible man. I would say about 12 years ago, he started to have a cognitive loss it's it was slow and it was concerning and uh, we were we were all very upset and and concerned but then we started to see a, sort of a an increase in the decline so i took him to i pulled some strings and i took him to see the top physician in houston and probably the world dr stan appel and it was at that meeting with dr appel who he told me look there's not much one can do for dementias and, and cognitive loss, but I am working on some exciting innovations. And these are things that are the next generation of technologies and drugs that can help dementia and ALS and other diseases, neurodegenerative diseases. So I met with him a week later and he walked me through his slide deck and he said, Howard, are you, uh, are you interested to help me in this journey? And I said, I, I was shocked at the data he showed me. It was remarkable in how he was able to stop progression of, of some of these diseases in patients. And I said, absolutely. And it was at that point, we joined hands and we formed, we formed Koya and, and off we went to the races. And, I, and subsequently, I will say a few years later, three years later, which was about two, which was about a year and a half ago, we went public in a difficult market condition. It was the week of we went public successfully my father passed away so mm -hmm. it was a bittersweet but more bitter than sweet mm -hmm. but it was uh sort of my father pushing me and saying you know work towards developing these therapeutics and and do the best that you can and i truly think we've got some remarkable drugs wow that's an amazing amazing story uh please tell us a little about koya what you do and some of your competitive advantages yeah. So Koya is focused around neurodegenerative diseases, and we are unique and different because we focus on something called the regulatory T cell, the Treg. The Treg is the most important cell in the body in controlling inflammation. If the Tregs aren't working properly, if they're dysfunctional, there's a tremendous amount of inflammation. We've discovered with Dr. Appel that the Tregs are all screwed up and compromised in Alzheimer's and Parkinson's and in ALS and other diseases. 
And our focus is to enhance those Tregs in the bloodstream. We're the only, we're the, the leaders in the field in neurodegeneration in how to ramp up those Tregs. And I can tell you it's exciting because we've run this now in a number of patients. In ALS, we, we showed that we could stop progression. Oh, wow. And now we're about to do a randomized double-blind trial, which is to be starting relatively soon. And in Alzheimer's disease, we uh, in this first trial that we ran, the, the patients improved. Their cognition was enhanced. Wow. And now we're waiting on a readout of a double-blind study in the next uh, month or two months. So this is a really interesting time for, for Koya and being a, a well-performing company, I should say, but a relatively small cap with a low float from an investor standpoint, it's sort of an exciting uh, uh, company to look at as an investor. No, I love that. So uh, let's talk about the science behind it a little bit, if you don't mind, just to educate the audience in case they're not familiar. Can you walk us through the cognitive decline and then what you're trying to do to help either stop it or pre reverse it? Sure. So let me talk a little bit about the science of inflammation and the brain, because that's important to understand. And there are different diseases. So let me just focus on, we can focus on ALS to start, and then I can talk about Alzheimer's. In ALS, well, what is true is that it's a much, it's a very much peripheral disease, meaning that the disease, yes, the central nervous system is involved, but it's what's happening in the periphery. And inflammation is way out of control in these in ALS. And the Tregs are all screwed up. What we've shown is that, in fact, the dysfunctional Tregs corresponds to the rate of decline of these patients. And that inflammation and that oxidative stress, the free radicals, causes the motor neurons to die and the axons to die. And what we're doing is we're adding two drugs in combination. One of them is low-dose interleukin-2, which is a small protein. And it's at a very low dose. And what it does is it selectively upregulates or enhances the T-Rex. But we're adding another drug in combination called abetacept or CTLA-4. It's the only develop, it's the only biosimilar in development. We and we signed a large licensing transaction with Dr. Reddy's. And that suppresses the inflammation in other components of the immune system. And the two together seem to be dynamite in controlling inflammation and appears to be well tolerated. So we're adding these two drugs in combination, combination biologics, and we believe that that will be the, the key in not just ALS, but in other diseases like Alzheimer's. I love that. Well, my fingers are all crossed. I hope that you do it for all of humanity. So, uh, Let's talk about risk. How do you handle risk? And what are some mistakes you see people make with respect to risk management? Risk becomes very severe uh, when you're not in control and you have a loss of emotional ability to make appropriate decision. What, what I mean to say is when you, when one is not a calm and collected individual, you tend to make rash, impulsive decisions, and you do it quickly. The way I control risk is there is inherent risk every day of my life, and I see all sorts of activities, not just within Koya. We've got sort of we got things in control, but it's what's out of one's control. It's the macro environment. It's this competitor. It's the supply dynamics. I never make a decision on the day specifically where I uh, uh, am assessing that specific risk factor. I take at least a day or two days. I count. I talk with experts and get great counsel. And then once I have all the facts, I make the appropriate decision. That's the key. And I teach this to my children as well, is never do anything in an impulsive way. Because that's the, the 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 quickest way to make a poor decision, uh, and the the last thing is it's something I learned from my father. My father taught me this going back to my dad. He said, "Always in life, remember what's the worst that can happen, and right. if you can deal with what the worst that can happen, then everything is fine." And 
when you actually look and assess what the worst can, that can happen, it's not so bad. It's truly not so bad if you objectively assess it. So all of these lessons I've learned in the past and I apply them and I try not get off track. I love that. Yeah, I'm a big fan of that. Everything you just said too. And a lot of that I covered in the book, which we spoke about before we started recording. So, okay, wonderful. So you, you take some time away from the event, whatever the event is that occurs to think about it, to gather fresh facts, counsel, get counsel from outside sources, and then make sure that emotional heightened emotional stance passes and then you review it and then you make the decision. That's the first thing. And then the second thing you do, if I understand you correctly, is you look at the worst case scenario. And as long as you're okay with the worst case scenario, there's nothing to worry about. Let's move forward. Is that correct? Absolutely. million percent. Thank Love you. It. Love it. Okay, Howard, next question for you. Um, what are some timeless lessons you've learned along the way that you'd like to share with the audience? Is passion drives everything. If one doesn't have a true love and a meaningful end outcome that you're striving for, then it's not worth doing what you're doing. If yeah. you're doing it just for material aspects, then you're only going to get so far. That to me is what drives me every day. And even when there's a bump in the road, I know the pain that I've been through with my, fa my own family, and I know what other people are going through. Mm -hmm. To know that patients and people are suffering and dementia is still rife and out there, and it's it's a horrible yeah. pandemic. If you want to call a pandemic, it's dementia and the increasing population. And by the way, none of us are getting any younger, right? Exactly. So we all, <laughs> the, the number one risk factor is age for yeah. dementia. Right. So I am working on behalf of all of us. Thank and you. And there's no better, you're welcome. And if there's no better incentive and motivation, then I I have no other comment. But but it's true love and passion for what one does. I love that. That is so powerful. And how about some timeless mistakes that you've learned along the way and how do you avoid them or learn from them? I think being so uh, focused on one outcome is a bad idea because if you only are have your blinders on and you are moving in one direction without the understanding that there are multiple forks in the road, mm -hmm. there are that's the cause of psychological distress and pain. Mm -hmm. Realize that the this is a journey, it's a marathon and it's not a sprint. Mm -hmm. And that the way to get to the, the finish line is not just one road. And as a young person, when you're growing up, you realize that there's only one way and I'm only going to do it this pathway. At the blinders. That's the blinders. <laughs> and that to me is a recipe for pain and anxiety and distress. Realize that even if you make another decision, there's still a way to get to where you want to go, but do it calmly. And, and I, and every day that I, uh, every day that I exist and I and I work at Koya, I, I try and remember that fact because this is a it's a journey. It's a journey to to ultimately do the right thing and get to the the finished goal, which is uh, something for patients. I love that. How about leadership? So you're a leader now, and you've been under leaders before. What are some timeless lessons you've learned about leadership, and that you'd like to share with the audience? is to always recognize and reward people in your organization because they are the ones that are driving forward day to day the successes of the company. Make sure that the people underneath you, when I say underneath, I'm saying not that they're underneath you in, in general, but that they work in this sort of silo model, that they are appreciated and that you recognize them verbally and in writing and that they understand that you truly appreciate them and you're not just saying that right and i cannot tell you how much people that i collaborate and work with call me up and say it's wonderful to work with you howard uh, you're the best person i've ever worked for and worked with because you appreciate me and what i'm doing every day that to me there's no reason to be hard on someone and there's no reason to bully someone and there's no reason to micromanage someone, we're all professionals. 
and I will continue to to operate that way. I love it. Yeah, we're very much aligned on the same boat as that. I love that. Okay, let's talk about adversity and obstacles. Can you share with us some adversity you've had to overcome along the way or how you handle obstacles? Well, I can talk a number of specific examples, but I can also talk high level. Adversity is a inherent part of life. Without adversity, there's no success. It's the yin yin yang hypothesis, right? Um, yeah. There can be no happiness without sadness and, and, and on and on we go. So adversity uh, happens in, on a daily basis and you can, one cannot handle adversity by oneself. You always have to have someone to speak with, whether it is a colleague or whether it is a spouse or whether it is a psychologist, whoever it may be, one needs to be able to discuss what that adversity is and walk through why why there's that adversity and and what the pathway is around that adversity. Ad adversity. Because there's always a, a way to deal with adversity. And why that adversity is causing you pain and why is it making you emotionally labile? And, once you're able to understand that, then you get around that. If it's what you don't ta handle directly and you know right on the point is what will continue to psychologically bedevil you yep. and will be there, even if you're not thinking about that adversity, it will be there subconsciously with you. So always take it directly head on and you shall be fine as long as you you know, truly interrogate what that adversity is. Wow, I love that. I think that's one of the best quotes I've ever had on the show. And I love getting timeless advice. That's the whole point of the show. But without adversity, there's no success. I mean, that is absolutely brilliant. So I, I love that. Love it, love it, love it. All right. Um, last question for you, Howard. How? Do you, what's the best piece of advice you'd like to give the audience or give your 20 or 30 year old self? Life is a marathon and it's not a sprint. When I was 20 or 30, I, I wanted things now, now, now. I did not want to wait and I didn't want to do the hard work to get to where I wanted to go. Mm -hmm. And the, uh, the second component is that there is no traditional way to be successful. One doesn't need to go and do a, a MBA from Harvard to become a success yeah. one doesn't need to go do an md phd mba to become a biotech entrepreneur right there is no true pathway what what there is is there's the things that you can't teach yourself which if you have those things you will be successful S uh, stick with it don't uh, have patience don't uh, fret and just continue to work hard and the last thing I would say, and I teach this to my own son and, and my kids, is that meet as many people as you can when you're younger, network, be uh, be true to that person and be uh, just a professional and be respectful. And that will get you very far is the connectivities and the networks that you develop when you're younger. I wish I, I, wish I networked more when I was younger. And I realize how important that is because it goes such a long distance in such a far way. So do I, by the way. I second that. <laughs> well, Dr. Howard Berman, this has been absolutely fantastic. CEO and chairman of Coya Therapeutics. Ticker symbol is COYA. I look forward to having you on again, hopefully soon, with some really good news. I wish you nothing but the best success and for all of our minds and uh, your, your fight, which is an app, extremely noble and I, I hope it works in the bottom of my heart because I've dealt with a lot of that in my family as well and it's not fun and you're absolutely right. So you're you're on the right path. Thank you. Thank you for having me, Adam. Bye-bye.